Okay, well, welcome to part one of a three-part short series on uh, cat coding and categorizing. My name is Sean Jordan, and I'm going to walk you through just some different techniques that we use for coding and categorizing, and I often use those terms inter interchangeably. I really shouldn't because they refer to two different things that you can do with data, but that are often done uh, correctly. I often skip coding and use categor categorizing, and in fact, in our second uh, video, you're going to see my shortcut that I use. And the third video, I'm going to show you how to do coding in Qualtrics, but it's not necessarily going to be categorizing. Uh, it's going to be more of a coding approach. So coding and categorizing are techniques that we use in qualitative data analysis to make sense of qualitative data, but there is no right way to do coding and categorization. And in fact, what you're often going to find is that where you are working at the time uh, is going to have a different way of doing things than uh, other places that you may have worked or other places that you may go or other researchers that you may run into. So it's not to say that there aren't accepted best practices. It's just to say that everybody does things a little bit differently and it's always in service at the end of the day to the client or end user who uh, you're preparing data for. So with that said, um, there are a few steps to the uh, coding and categorization process and I've got them here in a handout and this handout will be available on Blackboard as well as uh, in the notes from this video in case you're not actually in the class. So step one is to read over the data and make a broad, uh, make note of broad themes, quotable passages, and obvious structure. And you really should spend some time reading your data before you start coding. It's, it's easy to just get into coding right away and spend a lot of time trying to make sense of the data from an analytic point of view, but you really should read and familiarize yourself with the data before you do that so that you know what to expect. Make notes, go through this process of pre-coding so that you have a good idea of what's coming up. It'll actually benefit you in the long run because you'll, you'll have a much better coding schema that you'll come up with. Step two is to determine what approach and method you'll use to code your data. And these are things that we talked about in the actual lecture series um, on categorization and coding. And you can review those videos to learn more about that. Step three is to conduct your first cycle of coding, adding codes to each datum. And you're going to use a code book to keep track of codes. So I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Step four is to assign codes to broader descriptive categories. I often do this as I'm going. Uh, I find it a little bit easier to do. You might want to write definitions or rules for inclusion for categories uh, if your categories are complicated. We're going to look at a very simple example here. But um, if you're doing something that's more complicated, like behavioral or um, uh, something that's less descriptive and more about... Uh, things that you're looking for in the data set that are not so obvious, then you might need to have a little bit more than just a category title to tell you what belongs in what category. Step five is to conduct second cycle coding, evaluating existing codes and looking for opportunities to revise, condense, or collapse codes and categories. And often that's conducted by a second researcher. Although if you're a one-man shop or one-woman shop, it may be you. And Sometimes you even do it yourself and then have someone else follow up and do a third cycle of coding so that they can evaluate what you did. Again, it just depends on your particular organization's policies for dealing with data, um, how much time you have available, how many analysts you have that are ready to do these kind of things. Coding and categorizing can be a really tedious process. So anyhow, with that said, let me go ahead and show you because I think it's much easier to see this in action. Let me go ahead and show you using a data set that we generated in our class. So this is a data set that I pulled um, from our most recent class meeting, and we're going to look at question two, and it says, let's imagine for a moment that you're going to take a one-week vacation to a city in the United States. Where would you go and why? And it also imposed a budget. I think they, uh, they the students were allowed to have like $1,500 or something like that as, as a budget for their vacation. So anyway, um, this was an open-ended question, and they were able to give responses. We had 17 people respond to the survey. And the first thing that I did was I took the data here, and I copied them over into a Word document. Here they are. And I read them and just kind of, kind of read through what they had to say, kind of paid attention to common themes. I noticed quite a few of them uh, referred to Florida or California in some way. And, in fact, one thing that's often even a good idea is um, before you copy them over to go ahead and sort them so that they're alphabetized and that makes it even a little bit easier. Although a lot of these started off with I would go. So that wasn't quite so helpful in this particular set of data. So I read over this and I also noticed that a few people mentioned things like Spain, um, the Virgin Islands, London or Paris, which actually the question asked about the United States and lo and behold, they didn't answer the question correctly. That happens. And one person even said a beach resort. They didn't say where. They just said they like to go to the beach. So 
that's helpful though to know that we're going to have those irregularities in our data because then I can when I go and start actually developing the codes which I've done right here in our code book um, I can start thinking really carefully about where uh, I'm where I'm going to put things and how I'm going to deal with the data so in this case what I did was I generated a code for every city or place that was mentioned and I also included um, for Florida because there are people that just said Florida I just put, put, put a code called Florida general I put a code for beach resort um, yeah I think every, everywhere else was mentioned was a city and then what I did was I came over here and I developed these categories and the categories I decided it made the most sense since we were talking about cities in the US to make them by state so Florida California Louisiana Colorado and Illinois are all the states in which cities were mentioned and then I also have a code for other and then a code for general and um, what I did here in this column was I wanted to know where my codes map to my categories so I put what category they belong in so Miami goes to Florida Fort Lauderdale Destin Florida general all go to my Florida category San Diego Big Sur Los Angeles and San Francisco all go into California New Orleans goes into Louisiana Beach Resort goes into general because that was just a general comment Col Colorado goes into Colorado because it was mentioned um, just as Colorado Chicago goes into Illinois London Paris Virgin Islands and Spain all go into other because I'm not actually concerned about what foreign country they would go to I, the question was actually about the US so I'm just gonna put them in other for right now and I can always go back and recategorize them later if there's something of use there so then what I can start to do is I can take these data copy them over into a separate tab and then start to read start to read what they have to say and I'll go through a process here what I've done is I've created some columns um, the first column I've created is called Q2 where because the question asks where would you go um, and then code and then the one because I can have more than one column that has codes in it. and I'll show you why in just a moment now this particular question was really badly worded it asked where would you go and why so the first thing I'm going to code is where they would go and then I'll look at the why in just a moment so so for our columns we have Q2 where would you go code and I have two columns for, for codes and then I also have a, a column for category and so look this one for example it says Florida because I love beaches and I will have a gala time there not sure what a gala time is but they said Florida so the code for that I look at my code book is four so I put a four on there I don't have any other cities that I need to code in but I do need to code in a category my category is one which is for Florida that's comes from my category column over here I would go to Fort Lauderdale because I have friends there and it's near the beach so that that is a two for a code and it's a one for a category I would I would uh, love to take to London or Paris okay so here's a case where we have two cities that can get coded in so London is 13 and Paris is 14 in my code book and those would both go under category 6 which is other um, I would go somewhere in the Virgin Islands or farther south okay well I'm not interested in farther south that's not a place that I can really define but I can code Virgin Islands that's 15 and again that would go under other I would go to San Diego I enjoy the weather Southern California and I have family there okay so San Diego gets a five um, Southern California is again not a place and San Diego is in Southern California so we're not gonna worry about that and um, we're gonna go ahead and put that under category two I would travel to Spain okay that's category 16 and or excuse me code 16 and category 6 Destin Florida that is code 3 and category 1 I would go to New Orleans uh, that is code 9 and category 3 for Louisiana Los Angeles that's code 7 and category 2 I would go to Big Sur in California well I'm glad they told me where Big Sur was I actually did know that but if I didn't know that I would have had to have looked it up so I know that it's in California so I, my code is six and then my category is two for California a beach resort okay so I made a code for this it's code 10 and that's gonna go under category seven for general I'd go to San Francisco so that is code eight and that's gonna be category two for California I would go to Miami that's code one and category one I would go to Colorado Colorado is code 11 and category 4 I would go to Florida Florida is um, code 4 and category 1 I would go to Chicago Chicago is code 12 and category 5 for Illinois 
Well, this is a tough question. I would love to go to Miami. Miami is code one. And we're assuming they mean Miami, Florida, based on the fact they're talking about beaches and things like that. So we'll also put that in category one. So there we go. What we've done is for these 17 um, rows of data, we have successfully put a code or more, more than one code in, in one case, and then a category for every one of these pieces of data. And so now what I can do is I can look specifically at the cities that were mentioned um, using using this, this code book, or I can look at the categories, the broader categories that, you know, what state did they want to go to? And then I can drill down and find out what cities that they were looking at. And for other, I can see what places that they mentioned for other. It's really easy for me to take this code book and actually look really quickly at, at, at what, what we found. And um, I'm really only limited by the list that I want to make. So if I had 100 responses like this, I could I could make a list of all of the cities that were mentioned in those 100 responses, a uh, list of categories that, that fit that, and very very quickly code and categorize this data. But I also have the, have the question of why that I need to deal with. So I'm going to hide these columns for a moment. Hide. And I've created some other columns on Y. So Q2 Y code 1, Q2 Y code 2, and Q2 Y code 3. I think there's going to be at least three reasons in some of these comments that I need to look at. And then we'll have Q2 Y cat 1 for category 1, and Q2 Y for category 2, because there may be at least one or two thematic categories that show up in the data. Okay, so I'm not. I I I'm, I'm now going to need to create a new code book because the code book that I was using was for the places. So we'll call this place, and we're going to make a copy of this, and we're going to call this Y. Okay, so I'm going to wipe out my codes that I had, wipe out my assigned to categories that I had, and I'm going to wipe out the actual categories that I'd written. Okay, so some of the reasons why people might go to a place. I usually try to preserve the wording that they used as much as possible. So I love beaches. Um, I will have a, I, I think gala time probably meant good time. It was maybe an autocorrect issue. So I will have a good time. It can be a code. Um, I would love to go to Fort Lauderdale because I have, fr I have friends there. Um, maybe we could change the code I love beaches to um, a beach is nearby, or maybe we maybe we could actually say I love beaches, and then a beach is nearby, and we can make those that part of a category later on. Um, let's see, hotels are cheap. What else did this comment say? Enjoy the city by exploring and maybe backpacking. Um, exploring a city. Backpacking. Um, I love warm weather. I love to relax. And this says on the beach. So being near a beach would uh, uh, get away from distractions. I'm not going to go through all these. I'm just going to show you a few here. Um, I love the weather there. I have family there. Um, we'll change hotels are cheap to lodging is cheap. Uh, let's see, I have a a friend from undergrad that's there and lives, so I'd have someone show me around the country. Um, so I would have a friend to guide me there. Um, I love the culture there. Okay, so... Oh, and I love the sports there. As I mentioned, foot football, which uh, we here in America we call, of course call soccer. So, okay. So now we have some codes. We can continue generating these for all the different comments that we see. But I can I can also begin putting these in categories. So I could put beaches as a category. Um, I could put friends, family as a category. I could put inexpensive as a category. I could put um, getting away put nice weather. 
and then I could begin to start putting some of these codes into this into the category. So I love beaches would get a a one. Uh, friends and family. I have friends there. Um, I have family there. I have a friend to guide me there. That's what all. Those would all work. Inexpensive. Let's see. Lodging is cheap. I thought we had another one about airfare being cheap. I guess I didn't actually make that into a category. Um, getting away. I love to relax. Uh, get away from the distractions. Nice weather would be five. I love the warm weather, things like that. So these categories are going to help me to kind of collapse some of these codes down. And eventually, I might even revise my codes a little bit by using the categories instead of using the codes. But then I can go, I can go back to the, here and I can start coding. So uh, I love beaches. I'll have a good time. That gets a category um, of one. And um, we didn't actually have a category assigned to I will have a good time. So we'll make that six. So nice time. But anyhow, so, so we can begin to take these columns and put numbers into them to help us to make sense of these data. And I'm going to drag this over here a little bit just so we can see everything on the screen. Uh, I go to Fort Lauderdale because I have friends there, free lodging, and it's near the beach. So I have friends there is three, lodging is cheap is five, and beaches nearby is four. And so beaches is a category, friends, family. And we, I guess we're going to need to make a third categorical column for inexpensive and so on down the line. This is this is how we would treat these kind of data. Now, as you can see, this is a tedious process, but here's the here's the advantage of doing things this way. So I'll go back and unhide my original columns from my um, from my where. So I can now take these columns and copy them back into my data set. And oh, first thing I need to do is make three new columns, and then I can copy the, these over. And then right in my right in my data set, preserving the rows I already have, I can have these codes. And all I need to do now is just refer back to my code book to find out what these mean. And if I import this into SPSS or another tool that allows me to program my codes in, um, I can very easily make sense of these data and use them um, to generate quick charts to uh, get a real resolution and understanding on what I've learned. Uh, it's 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 very easy and very useful. Here's the problem with this process, though, is it takes a while. Um, and then going back and reviewing the codes and, and, and how you've assigned things is tedious. And it can take a long time to go through it. I also find that in qualitative research, there's a limited usefulness to doing all of this. And the limited usefulness is that we're not really looking for quantitative insights. And so we're sort of, we're taking all these data and turning them into numbers that, uh, that, that we can code. And then, you know, being able to quantify and drill down and all those other things that we would do in quantitative research. But for qualitative research, it's not really how we look at data so much. So this coding schema can be really good for complex data where you can have a lot of codes assigned to a lot of different comments and things like that. But what I have found is that often the process of coding is so tedious and so time consuming that for marketing research where we need to have a quick turnaround on data that there's often a better way to go through that and that is to just simply categorize the data and not to worry about coding it but if you're going to categorize it you need to do something a little bit different and that is you need to put the context of the comments in the comments and so i'm going to explain in the next video how i do that professionally and what my end result looks like